you only have to be in ministry for about a year. Not 40 like me, the old guy, but you only have to be in ministry about a year before it will happen. What is it? Finish preaching, presuming you stick around, not all pastors do, but presuming you stick around in the sanctuary, the worship center, and someone comes up and starts talking to you. It says, I need to ask you something. I need to talk to you. And you politely talk to that person. And then that's that, except that person comes back the next week and the next week. Oh, that person may not have come back the week after that, but that was only because that person was on vacation. But then they come back again. And every time you stop preaching, every time you step down, you can see that person coming out of the corner of your eye. And now you've almost gotten to the dread situation. Oh, my goodness. I'm about to listen again to that person. Sometimes it's critical, but it's not all the time critical. It might just be somebody that just wants some of your time, even though they do not have the self-awareness to understand that they are monopolizing your time to the detriment of the other church members, and they are draining you emotionally most of the time. Well, my name is Tom Rainer. You are at the Church Answers Podcast. These are some of the difficult questions we try to answer in a very short amount of time. We're able to offer this free ministry because of Belay. Belay are those people that provide these workers for you that are remote staffing. They take care of all the work for you. They do an incredible job. They've been around since 2010. Church Answers has had a Belay worker from our origins. And, uh, hey, let them do the work for you and you do the things you have been called to do. And also get their download. Their download is called Four Costly Financial Mistakes for Churches. You can get it by going to Tom, T-H-O-M, at 55123. Okay, I know that not everybody who listens to this podcast is a pastor, but a lot of you are. So you're listening to that podcast, this podcast, and you're saying, Tom, have you been spying on me? I'm experiencing that right now. Or you may say, Tom, have you read my journal? I've been writing about that person in the past, and you are dead on. Quite frankly, I rarely encounter a pastor who has been in the ministry a year or more that hadn't had that particular situation where that person comes down immediately after you preach and speaks to you. Sometimes it's the dreaded negative, negative comments. Sometimes is they just want to talk. Now, what are some points we need to realize? Well, one thing that we need to realize is many people only see you, the pastor, in the pulpit every week. Not everybody comes by the church. Not everybody has counseling sessions with you. Not everybody is a personal friend with you. And so the first reality you just got to think of, if you're, if you're preaching to 200 people, there are probably 180 to 190 of them who have not seen you in a week and will not see you for the next week. And so the first reality that you need to think about is, okay, this is their only, and I hesitate to use the word shot, but this is their only shot at me, and I just need to be a bit understanding. That's the first point. So when someone comes up to you, this is the time where they want to talk to you because they haven't had any time otherwise. And, of course, they want to talk to you. You're the under-shepherd of the church. You're the lead guy's leader at the church. You may have preached a sermon that has spoken to them. Okay, so much for that. But then that person comes back the next week, and then again, and again, and again. How do you respond to that church member who always wants to talk to you after you preach? Well, one thing that I would say is consider the fact that it might be seasonal. I don't know how long the season will last. You know, will that person come up to you for eight or 10 weeks? Can you take it for eight or 10 weeks where the same person's coming up to you? Then knowing that that person is uh, not going to do that anymore, that it was just for a season, there's that possibility, and you may want to wait it out. Instead of having any type of um, confrontation or discussion, you may just want to wait it out and, and, and see what happens. So first thing you need to realize is this person that may not have seen you in a week, and this may be seasonal. There may be a specific need where he or she feels like, I really want to talk to the pastor. So that's the pastoral side. Now, it can get egregious. It can get exceedingly difficult. After weeks, after weeks, after weeks, with the rarely an exception, the same person wants to come up and talk to you. At some point, you need to do something. 
Now, what are the alternatives? You, many times you don't want to offend that person, whether they are a critic or a supporter or just someone who just needs an ear. You, you, you don't want to get into the business of hurting them or offending them. So though it may not be possible, there are some ways that you can get this person to move on to the next step. And something may just be from you. And it can be a very nice statement. And, and it can be something like this. Hey, love talking to you, uh, if you can say that in all honesty. Um, but, you know, I have some other people I need to talk to as well. So I'm going to need to move on. I've actually done that. Now, here's the reality. I do it with a little bit of ease because I'm an introvert. It is something that just kind of comes naturally to me. I can get drained by someone. And so I'm able to, to say those words in a way that I don't think offends. I don't know for sure, but I've, I've been able to say, hey, I've got some other people who want to talk to me. Or I've got some other things I need to do. And um, I said, I've been happy to talk to you these last few times, but uh, let, let me move on. Now, will that hurt that person's feeling? Maybe. Maybe if you do it soft enough, though, it may not hurt the feeling so much that it will be a permanent wound or even a long term wound and you will be able to move on. However, what if that person does not accept that gentle suggestion or general push away and that person keeps coming back again and again and again? I will say this. The pastors who have told the person that they need to give their time to some other people after the service. They have told me for the most part, I've heard that that methodology has worked. If, if, if it lasted more than a season, the methodology of saying I need to talk to some other people it was like a wake up call to the person. All of a sudden they had self-awareness. They were able to say, yeah, I'm probably doing that. However, if you've been in ministry at least five years, you've had that person that won't go away no matter what. And quite frankly, I've had people and I've been preaching in a church recently and uh, not as an interim, but uh, just some fill in shots. And the same person comes up to me every time. Well, some of the cases may be some emotional and mental damage. And there, there is something there that, you know, is missing. And there's something there that, you know, no matter how, what you tell them, they're going to keep coming back. In those cases, you likely need someone standing with you to be able to take that person and say, I will talk to you. It may be someone who is an elder in your church or a deacon in your church or another staff member in your church. There has to come a point when you finally say, I need some help to get away from this person. It sounds crass. It sounds harsh. It sounds non-pastoral. But we're talking about someone that you gave it a season, several weeks, then we're talking about someone that you said you needed to move on and they didn't. And they're still coming and talking to you. It's at this point that you have an issue and you need to address it. And the way to address it at this point is to get the other person involved. And that other person is going to start listening to them. The reality of it is they probably don't want that other person to be their ear. They want you the pastor. But if you keep on doing that, one of two things will happen. They'll keep talking to the other person. But the most likely thing that will happen is that they will move on because they know that they can no longer continue to talk to the pastor every time after a sermon. Now, hear me well as I wrap this up. In no way am I suggesting that you be unfriendly to people who come up to you after you preach. I get it. You're tired. Some of you have preached one, two, three, and even four sermons that morning. I get it. I get it that preaching is an emotionally exerting exercise. I get that. But also understand that people are going to be coming up to you because they're seeing you for the first time this week. It's like they're, they're, they're seeing a family member, if you will, that they have not seen in a while. Be pastoral. Listen to them. Talk to them. Ask God for strength, for energy to get through that moment. For those people who are not constantly the same one returning again and again, I think it is good for you to give them that time. I struggled as an introvert. More times than not, I did okay, but on more than one time that I would like to admit, I did not do well. I just walked away. So how do you respond to that church member who always wants to talk to you after you preach? Listen for a season. Suggest to them that it's time to move on. And if that does not work, bring in a third party to try to take care of it. 
Well, these are the type of situations we mentioned on the Church Answers podcast. That's why I know this podcast is one of the fastest growing podcasts there is. And we're delighted to have you as a part of the Church Answers family. Give us a rating and review on wherever you listen to this on your podcasting app. Or subscribe to us on YouTube if you happen to be going through the arduous task of watching me as well as listening. We'll see you in the next episode.